very good morning to Dr. Amran. Uh, this is a video presentation for ECC 4204 Internet Computing. And we would like to introduce ourselves first. My name is Sean Yap. My metric number is 181806. My name is Lim Chin Singh. Metric number 184127. I am Dante Wei. My metric number is 182621. I am James T. Chow Singh. Metric number 185391. My name is Chan Da. My metric number is 186479. My name is Prasad Krishnan, metric number 183415. So first, let me uh, tell you about the outline for this presentation. We will be talking about websites and website application. Then we will move on to a real-time uh, real simulation uh, with a circuit demonstration and the inspection of the web page. And then finally, we will conclude uh, the presentation. Uh, let me introduce to you the what is websites. So firstly, we'll be talking about what is static and what is dynamic websites. So let me give you an illustration. I think most of us are, uh, we all know what is Subway. You can see that at Subway, you have many choices. You can choose what kind of vegetables you want. And next, you can also get to choose what kind of sauces you want. And let's say if you want to order a sandwich, you can order a predetermined sandwich, let's say a chicken ham sandwich. And you can also customize your own sandwich. You can ask them to add more meat, add more vegetables, add more sauces to get something totally new. And so that is what static and dynamic websites are. Static websites are some websites that have already been predetermined or pre-coded, while dynamic websites change in their appearance depending on what is the input that is given. So as we can see here, the differences between static and dynamic is that for static, fixed code uh, is put inside the server and every time we fetch that code, it will always give the same web page. However, for dynamic, the changes that can happen in the server will determine what is the appearance of the web page. We can see that for static, it receives the same set of preview files. For example, if it calls a certain picture, the picture will always come back the same. While for dynamic, it receives a dynamically generated HTML page. So the, depending on what is the input, it will always give you something new. So we can see also one difference is that for a static web page, the page is rendered in the browser. Uh, for example, Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox. While dynamic pages are normally rendered in the server where you have sometimes a database or a server base. An example of a static and dynamic website is, for example here, static, we have the White House page where every time you search that page, you will always get the same page. And a, an example of a dynamic page is Facebook. Depending on your user login and your password, you will always get something new. You will get your home page and the news feed that is dependent on your friends. Another example local is that if you have uh, access to the SMP, uh, we can see that every time you use your own password and your own login ID, you will get something different. And if we access our faculty staff page, we will get the same page. We will get our Ketua Jabatan and also the staff members that are in our department. So these are the differences between the static and the dynamic web page. Moving on to web-based application, before that, what is an application? By looking at this, this is a Microsoft Word application where user can use this application that is installed on our computer to do uh, some, some work. For example, from Microsoft Word, we can open any file or we can choose the spelling, checking, and we can load any type of form and as well as saving our Word file. So, an application is a collection of functions in a program where you can see all these functions as one, as in Microsoft Word. So this is a, a rough idea of an application. So moving on, next. Talking about web-based application, you can see that a web client, or we call it browser, as in Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, or even Mozilla Firefox is used to access the web application through the protocol naming HTTP. What is a protocol? A protocol is a common language that is used to interact between the web client and the web application. So in this case, HTTP is the protocol to interact or communicate between the browser and the web application. Okay. Over here, we can see that this Microsoft Word is actually built online as in web-based application. 
Previously, I was talking about Microsoft Word as in an application installed in our computer. But Microsoft comes out with something to do online. We can actually do our wording or our word editing on this online based Microsoft Word where the similar function can be found in this web application. And this application is developed by HTML, CSS, or even JavaScript technology. So, uh, for this example, HTML is used to, to design for the text, images, audio, and video. Other services like Java, Net, PHP, or Ruby are the other language that can be used to develop this web-based application. Other than that, other than web-based application, we can actually uh, use mobile application where you can see from here that is used from the mobile phone and this is written in Android language. Similar function can be used through our mobile phone. Okay? As long as we access to the internet, we can use whatever web-based application using our phone. And over here, uh, this is the example of Gmail where user can use this application to check email, to send email, to open open an email or even to do some chatting. Okay, so these are the web services that can be used in the Gmail mobile application or we can say that it is based on the web online, web based application. That's all. Thank you. So the web based application that our group chosen is the Full Start. Full Start is a web based application that integrated three functionality which is the visualize, simulate and inter interact. So first the visualize, it means that you can draw the animations, it shows the animation of the voltage, current flow and the charges flow on, the, on our circuit. And then the simulate, it means you can build your own circuit then the website will help you to simulate to get the result output performance of your circuit. Lastly is the interact. So you can adjust your, your parameters on your circuit. For example, you adjust the voltage of your op amp so that you will get different result output. This is the yeah, interaction space. So now we go to the website for start. So now the, this is the website of for start. It shows the circuit, then you can draw or they are provide libraries of the circuit. So this website basically, if you are a beginner, when you go into the website, you can use the, the introduction to this website. Basically, it's this, this direction will teach you the, how to use this website. Examples like putting the circuit component, then using the scope. It can be used like here. You see, draw. It means add so many of the components to go in. Capacitor, inductor, switches. And then after you draw your circuit, you can use the scope to watch the output of your circuit. Then this one is the their built-in circuit. So many so and so many examples for you to study. So this is a website good for your study good for uh, EE engineers. Besides, this website also has, this is shown in the web base. I mean, you use computer, you can see like this play out, but in, if you open your mobile phone, you open from the mobile phone, it will show these versions, which because of the JavaScript they write, they can render the pages into different versions. Yeah, that's all. So now I would like to talk about the electronic demonstration. So actually you can see from this web-based application, you can find a lot of applications such as the basic, home, home floor, register, other than that, and so on. AC circuit, basic filter. Actually, all of this circuit is really help the new EE student to know and more familiar with the um, concept theory of some of the, some of the application. So, now I just show a few simple circuit. I just show a few simple um, circuit to try to use and try to let the user more understand how to use the web-based application.
So maybe I click the code page divider. And you can see from the you can see from the screen. You can so the simple circuit is how the concept of the voltage divider. Okay. So um you initially you need to run and to run the circuit and you can adjust the better the voltage source to different value, then you can check the output. Then you can simply adjust this probe to test any position of to test the output voltage voltage at any position. So you can see from here. Actually this one is 10 volt, the maximum is 10 volt. Then if you switch the probe to here, because it's half. So because it's half, so the voltage becomes a 5 volt. So actually this one is very simple and you can let the student more understand how the voltage is better. Actually for secondary school at least. So the other than the simulation of voltage divider, you can also found the IV curve, IV characteristic curve for diode. So you you can see the here there's a the I yes voltage current yes voltage characteristic for the diode. And then you can click this. You can know the the characteristic. And also you can see the more advantage is like this. Yeah, the halfway rectifier. So actually for this circuit, for all of the weight based application, this one already really a lot can tell the student. So uh, I would love to elaborate more, so I will pass to my group and my friend to continue the weight based structure. Okay. My name is Prasan Krishnan, my battery number is one eight three four one five. So as my group mates was talking about defaultstart.com which is a circuit simulator uh, website. This circuit simulator website has been developed using HTML language, which is hypertext markup language. As you can see, it's a very basic website where we can easily study the circuits or the simulations of circuits. So in order to see how this website has been developed, we can simply click, right click on the website and press inspect. So this particularly what does it does is we can see how does the coding for this web page have been developed so there is html there's a head file and body file so when you double click the head file you can get all the links which have been included in this particular website as you can see meta name viewport content with 820 it, it is a viewport whereby when you open the website in a phone or any other particular devices it suits to its original skin. Let's say we are opening in the laptop. The laptop screen will be just nice to uh, view this web page. Same goes to the, let's say we open in a tablet or phone. So this web page will be compatible with all the websites, all the devices, sorry. So as you can see title. So title is the circuit simulator app. So this is the title, circuit simulator app, link rail. So what does link rail means? So link rail is uh, the inline frame used to embed another document into this uh, website. Whenever you have two document websites within a current HTML document, so you can link both the uh, documents by using the syntax called link rail. Now so href is the hypertext reference and then we have like scripts where we include all the as you can see in the website include all the ads and yeah this is the head body head part so let's move on to the body part so the body is the main part so as you can see here hr what does hr means hr means horizontal loop when you click on the hr you can see where does the hr is becoming informed hr and then this is the width and height of the simulating uh, window which is this one as you can see I move my mouse to that part you can see the blue color form is forming on this uh, simulation so this drawing simulation are taken from a hypertext uh, another hypertext which is called circuit JS and then the next line will be a paragraph which is a paragraph so every line have been included in this website have in the paragraph form so every sentence here is in a paragraph form as i move on the paragraph syntax you can see that all the lines are being 
are highlighted so these are all the values let's say we want to see on how uh, reference have been done so this is anchor element anchor element and then hypertext reference so what does this do is we are we are at extracting another website or extracting another element for a website in order to get into this website so as you can see there is an anchor element and hypertext reference so this particular link will be when you click on this part you will get the full screen version of this whole uh, simulating app let's say i'm clicking on the as you can see yeah you get the full screen of the simulation so that what it means by having a, a anchor element and a hypertext reference that's creating a link actually so and then we have a script writing javascript and all the stuff these are all the most of the links which have been extracted you can just press on these links when you check out all the links so we're moving to the ads we have all the ads over here so let's say we are like pressing uh, this part of the body so this is all the apps so when you press on this we can know where does the things come from so the ripple banner available on app store all the links are in here so they use image sources so what does image sources mean so we are basically uh, extracting the image from another gif or jp jpeg or another png source into this element and then we have all let's see inspect on this so yeah this is another gif i have inspected and this have been uh, linked with a reference link called false start magic math physics so let's say i'm pressing on this uh, particular image we will be directed to another web, uh, link to see, uh, look or check throughout the mathematics so yeah and then basically this is how it has been developed it is a very simple website where we can simply study on the layout of the website by inspecting the element so these are all the head element, the body element. So what have been included in each paragraph? How does the links have been included on each sentence? They are very basic elements. By using a anchor element, paragraph elements, then we have a hypertext reference. So this is how basically to develop an easy website or web page. So that's all from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. So now I'm going to talk about the conclusion. Uh, so uh, the web-based application has several uh, advantages. Which is the first advantage is it can access anywhere. Uh, a web-based application is any application that uses a website as the interface of front end. Uh, user can easily access the application uh, from any computer connect to the internet using a uh, standard browser. Uh, and the second advantage is uh, it, is, it has easy installation and maintenance. Uh, once a new version or upgrade is installed on the host server as, uh, and the all user can access it straight away. And there is no need to upgrade the PC or of each and uh, every potential user. Uh, the web-based application actually can encompass all the applications that communicate with the user via HTTP. Uh, this website also includes various types of electronic demo demonstration, uh, basic AC circuit, pass passive filter, passive circuit, Diodes, of P amplifiers, MOSFET, transistor, uh, logic, and so on. Uh, it allows the student to be more familiar with the electronics, and it can help them to be more understanding with the working principle of the electronics. Okay, that's all.